Hi children, how are you? How have you been? How was your week? Did you have a fun week? How was school for everyone who goes to school? Right, and I know some children don't go to school yet, but very soon, because they are growing up, they will start to go to school. Now, welcome to today's service. Do you know what today's service is about? You're just about to find out. So let us pray and begin our service, and then we shall find out what we are doing in class today. So put our hands together, and we bow our heads, and we close our eyes, and let us pray. Lord, we say thank you this morning because you've given us another opportunity to come and just be present as we are taught your word. So Lord, as we listen, as we sing, as we get taught, we pray that we will understand and that more than anything, we will be able to apply what we are taught. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. And so to our service, the Lord be with you. So we have come together as children of God, we are drawn by his spirit, we are longing for his word, and we have come to praise the holy name of God, to share his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs, and also to pray for the needs of the world and the pain of the world, to rejoice in God's love, and as we go out to be sent in his peace, we are heirs of the Father, joint heirs with the Son, renewed in the Spirit, together we are one. And so we take a moment and we just reflect on how we have been this week and think if there is anything that we have done wrong, this is a good time to pray for ourselves so that God forgives us. So let us just pray and ask God to forgive us. So take a moment of quietness and think this week, what have you done that you need to tell God to forgive you? And so we say a prayer of repentance, eternal Father, God of our ancestors, before your power all things tremble, but through your Son we approach your throne. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. Our sins weigh heavily on our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Count them not against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness. Enlighten our hearts with the glory of Christ who died and rose again for us. Amen. And I say that prayer for the forgiveness of sins, and it goes like this. Lord of mercy, grant us your pardon and peace that cleansed from our sins, and with peace in our hearts, we may be free to serve you through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all the children say, Amen. And I know you know this song. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Made me glad. I will rejoice for he has has made me glad. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Made. This is the church, this is the church that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the church that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the church, this is the church that the Lord has made. You know, I can see some of you saying they are not in church because they are at home. Where you are, it is also church. Do you know that? Because where we join together to worship God, that becomes a church. So even at home, 
we are in church. This is the home, this is the home that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it all. Oh, this is the home that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the home, this is the home that the Lord has made. Wonderful. So this week, on to our lesson. Do you remember what we have been learning? For the last six, no, for the last seven Sundays, we have been talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember what we learned about? Do you remember how many are remaining in all the characters, the virtues of the fruit of the Spirit? Let me hear what you will say. How far have we gone? Remember and say with me. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. That is what we learned last Sunday about faithfulness. And teacher Paul taught us about faithfulness. So you can guess what we are learning about this Sunday. Somebody, the eighth fruit of the Holy Spirit is, say it loudly, right, gentleness. What is to be gentle? What is gentleness? Tell dad or mom or somebody who is right there next to you what you think gentleness is. It is number eight on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember how the, the song of the fruit of the Holy Spirit? For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Above this there is no law. Wow. I hope you sang nicely. So we are on to the fruit, gentleness. What is gentleness? What is gentleness? There is a saying in Swahili that says, Ametulia kama maji ya mtungi. Do you know that saying? Ametulia kama maji ya mtungi. When you put water in a jerry can, in a mtungi, and you just put it there, it just remains quiet. Even if you hit the mtungi, as long as it is, uh, the, the top is there tight, the water just remains in there. You shake the mtungi, the water is just inside the container, just being over there, quiet, cool, relaxed. You shake it, you shake it, you shake it, you keep it down like this, it just goes back to being in the mutungi. Quietly. Gentleness is we are being not violent. Not someone who always shakes people and disturbs people, but being someone who has no violence in them, does not play rough, always is uh, always brings out the rest of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, all the way from love. And you do so with a lot of gentleness, without violence, without roughness, all right? And our reading today is taken from the book of Genesis. Do you have your Bible? Time for the Bible reading. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. Do you know what it says? The Bible tells us a wonderful story about two young men, two boys. These boys were the sons of Adam and Eve. And they were born after Adam and Eve had gone out of the Garden of Eden. You remember that story? Good. So after the, the Lord had chased Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve got two children. Both of them were boys. And the Bible says that the first one was called Cain. And the second one was called Abel. Do you have a bigger brother? Or do you have a, a smaller brother? Do you have a bigger sister or a smaller sister? Now, Adam and Eve, our first parents, also had children. Those first two children, Cain and Abel. And you know what happened? Uh, the Bible says, as you continue to read that Abel was a shepherd. He kept sheep. He was out there in the field tending to his sheep. So he was a shepherd. And he kept uh, all the other animals that he could keep. And Cain was a farmer who, 
who did uh, who farmed crops. So Abel was a farmer who kept animals, and Cain was a crop farmer. And so one time, these two boys decided, I think I will bring a sacrifice to God. And they did exactly that. Each of them brought a sacrifice to God. But something happened. Say, teren, teren. Something happened. Abel's sacrifice was uh, like this. Abel gave an offering to the Lord. He killed the firstborn lamb from one of his sheep and gave the Lord the best part of it. You understand that? And then the Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering. But Cain brought an offering, but the Lord did not like the offering of Cain. Now, because of that, Cain became very angry. He was very angry at God. And he plotted something that we shall see very soon. Have you ever been angry at something? Just wait a minute. Then, God realized that Cain has become angry. And he asked Cain, what is it? What is wrong? Why are you so angry? And he told him, if you had done the right thing, everything would have been good for you. In fact, you would have been smiling. But you did the wrong thing. And now, sin is waiting for you over there. And it is waiting for you like a lion. Have you seen a lion wait for an animal to eat? Ha! Ah, so sin was waiting for, uh, for Cain like that. And God told him, it is waiting to attack you. And it wants to destroy you. But don't let it. After God had finished talking to Cain, Cain told Abel, small brother, come, let us go and take a walk. Let us walk into the field. Let me show you what is there. And now they were taking a walk, walking walking in the field, and maybe Cain was just telling Abel, look at that land, look at my crop, that is maize I have planted, that is wheat, that is watermelon, that is something else. And Abel is just over there, wow, it is so nice. Oh, over there in that empty field, I want to plant something else. But something happened. As they were just going, Cain decided, because he was very, very angry that God had not accepted his sacrifice, he kills Abel. And so, while they were out there in the field, Cain killed Abel. My goodness. And you know something? God saw all of it. And so God came back to Cain and asked him, what have you done? What have you done? So, God was like, Cain, where is Abel? And, I, and Cain, being as angry as he was before, he was like, how should I know? Am I supposed to look after my brother? Am I his keeper? And God asked him, Cain, what have you done? And now you have killed your own brother. And his blood flows on the ground. And now his blood is calling out to me to punish you. And so I will put a curse on you. Because you killed Abel and made his blood run out on the ground, you will never be able to farm again. Remember, Cain was a farmer. And God continues to tell Cain what the punishment would be. And then Cain replies and said, this punishment, it is too hard. You are making me leave my home. And I will wander about without a home. And anyone could kill me. But God told him, nobody will kill you. I will put a mark on you so that nobody will kill you. And if anyone kills you, I will punish them seven times to, what I, to how I have punished you. And so Cain went far away from the presence of the Lord. That is our reading in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. Now, we are talking about gentleness. And now, we have already said gentleness is not being aggressive or rough or fighting that we are always not violent. That is gentleness. Being people of understanding, that is gentleness. So question number one, have you ever been angry with your small brother or with your big brother? You remember when your small brother didn't share his toy or when your big brother didn't share his toy 
and you are over there. And they were riding and riding and riding and playing with their toy and playing with their toy. And you are like, give me, it's my turn. And they were like, no, it's mine. How did you feel? You got angry. You even wanted to beat them. Or when mom has come home or daddy and has given a phone to you. And now you are playing a game. And your brother or your sister is taking too much time on the phone. And you're telling them, please give me now, just a little, just one turn, please give me. And they're like, no, I haven't finished. And they stay with it 30 minutes, one hour, and you get angry. Very, very angry. What do you do in your anger? Are you like Cain or are you like Abel? Now, remember, Cain and Abel are brothers. And so, they needed to stay together in peace and in harmony. So now, Cain has gotten angry. Just like sometimes we get angry. And then in his heart he says, I will plan a way so that this my brother. I will revenge. Have you ever plotted a revenge against your brother or your sister? When they stayed with the phone or with the toy so much, you said, if mommy gives me the phone, I will stay with it. I will not even give him. Terrain, terrain. You became angry and you got revenge. Now that revenge is what is called violence. Sometimes you become angry and you even hit somebody. You hit your brother, you kick your brother, and that too is violence. But God is telling us we need to have gentleness. Because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to give us what? Gentleness in our hearts. Angry at school, your friend has done something, and we go and push them. Mm. Talk up. Angry at school, and you feel someone is doing something wrong, and you slap them. Or you hit them. And they are say, we are saying... We need to be gentle people, people who are not rough, people who don't push others, who don't slap or hit others, people who don't call others' names. You can say, me, I'm good. Me, I, I, don't, I don't hit them. I just call them bad names. That is not, that is not a violence. It is also violence. When you bully people or when you call those who you are angry with bad names, bad words, that is also what? Uh, violence. It is being rough. God is calling us to gentleness. He is telling us we need to be gentle people. And how do we be gentle? To make sure that when we are angry, we talk to God. We tell him, God, help me so that my anger, all this anger I am feeling, I am able to let it go without sinning. I am able to let it go. And we can have a short prayer about when we are angry. We tell God, God, Help me to bear the fruit of gentleness. When your brother is playing with a toy and you're feeling like you're getting angry because they have refused to share with you. Daddy bought you one pair of roller skates and they have skated and skated and they don't even want to give you just one turn. I'm saying you, you are small or you, you will fall, you, you will spoil and you're getting angry. You can pray a prayer and say, God, help me to bear the fruit of gentleness and God will always help us. So that we do not end up being like Cain and Abel and doing a lot of violence and rough things to our friends. Are we together? Great. And now it's time for what? It's time for our memory verse. Good. And our memory verse is from Philippians chapter 4 verse 5. Philippians chapter 4 verse 5. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. <gasps> Did you hear that? Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So, every time you feel angry, let us show gentleness by saying, You have not done the right thing to me, but I want to forgive you. Because I want the Holy Spirit to bear the fruit of gentleness in me. We say our memory verse again. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. One more time. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Philippians chapter 4 verse 5. 
We'll remember that one. And now we, that is the eighth uh, fruit of the Holy Spirit. So next Sunday we get to finish the fruit of the Spirit, okay? Good. Wonderful. Thank you for joining me. We shall exit with a song that shall play on our channel and then we shall call it a day. But before we go, remember, because you're watching from home, ask mom and dad to help you send your ministry support, your offertory. And you know how to do that? The pay bill number is on the screen and the account number is Sunday School, okay? Pay bill number is on the screen and account number is Sunday School. Yay! So we shall pray and then we shall sing the song and that will be the end of our lesson today. But before we even pray, what is our memory verse again? Uh -huh. Say it with me. Philippians chapter 4 verse 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Wonderful. Let us pray. Our hands together, we close our eyes and bow our heads and we pray. Lord, we thank you for teaching us about gentleness. Help us to bear the fruit of gentleness even when we are very, very, very angry. Help us to always call to you for help so that we are consistently gentle. Give us the patience to be gentle. Give us the understanding to be gentle. And Lord, give us also the courage to always be gentle even when other people are being rough to us. And also help us to teach others how to be gentle. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful. I'll see you next time. Bye.